If you've been a photographer for a while, you probably know that Photoshop is more powerful than Lightroom, and that's a fact. And even with all of the recent Lightroom advancements, Photoshop is still more powerful. In today's video, I wanna show you guys how to switch from Lightroom to Photoshop. I wanna show you the basics of Photoshop. Hello everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional photographer based in Southern Utah. And today I'm excited to share with you guys how to start using Photoshop. It's a great piece of software, uh, something that I'm using for editing almost all of my photos and it's something that you guys ought to be using. Uh, this is just a very basic video. It's just gonna cover some of the basics of using Photoshop. So if you've never used it before, this is a great place to start to just jump into Photoshop, start using it, and then you can go to some more advanced tutorials a little bit later once you understand the basics. And when I say this, trust me, Photoshop is going to help you unlock a new level in your photography. You are gonna take things to new heights if you put the time in to learn the software. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. I'll show you guys how to start using Photoshop if you're a Lightroom user. All right, so we've got our photo here in Lightroom and you guys wanna switch over to Photoshop. So the first thing is you need to know how to open the photo in Photoshop. You can open directly from Lightroom, which is by far the best way to do it if you're already using Lightroom. So what I like to do is apply some basic edits here in Lightroom. Um, you can see I've just adjusted a few different sliders here, a few different things down here, done some profile corrections in Lightroom, and then I jump straight over into Photoshop. Now, the way that I do that is when I have the photo selected here, I go to Photo, I go down to Edit In, and I do edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023. You can click that and then the photo will open right up in Photoshop 2023. I've already loaded it out, um, but for you guys, it might take a few seconds. Now, when you first get into Photoshop 2023, your screen might look a variety of different ways depending on if you've used it before. The absolute first thing you need to do to make sure that we're all on the same page here is you want to go to Window, Workspace, and change your uh, workspace to Photography. Now, once you use Photoshop a lot, you may have a custom workspace like I do, which is a little more customized and a little bit better, but for those of you guys that are just getting into Photoshop, you're just gonna wanna select photography right here, and that's gonna give you a lot of tools that you are gonna be using. So the, what these workspaces do is essentially they affect what is over here on the right side of the screen and what's in your toolbar. When you select photography, they give you things that are useful for photography as opposed to some of the other options which might give you things that are useful for like graphic design and web design and stuff like that. So you definitely wanna choose photography if you're editing photos. Now, the first thing you need to understand about Photoshop here is how the program is laid out. So of course we have our photo here in the middle. We can easily zoom in or zoom out by using Command minus to zoom out or Command plus to zoom in. Um, and on a PC, that's control minus and control plus. And I think if you have a mouse, you can even use the scrolling wheel to zoom in or out. Um, and then after you know that, that's gonna get you all around the photo. Now, if you zoom in and you wanna pan around the photo, if you hold the space bar, you get a hand. That allows you to pan. So that allows me to zoom in if I wanna do some touch up work over here. And then I just wanna move over without zooming out and zooming back in. So. Other than that, what you need to know is that our toolbar is over here on the left side. This contains all sorts of different tools. Now you're not gonna use a ton of these tools, but you might see yourself using things like the brush tool and the spot healing um, and a few of the selection tools as well as maybe the crop tool. These are all located over here. You can just click on them to select. Now when you click on a tool, the menu up here is going to change. The, this is like the toolbar customization spot. So you can see right now I have a ton of different options to adjust my brush. If I select this spot healing brush tool, my options will change. So these are going to be unique to every single tool that you have. Now, a lot of times when you're editing, especially landscape photography, you're not gonna be using a tool. So don't feel too locked in to like always using a tool. A lot of times you're just gonna be using stuff on the right side of the screen, which brings me to the next area. Now, the right side of the screen is where we're gonna be doing most of our work. This is where your layers live in the bottom right hand corner. You can see layers right here and all our layers are going to populate right here. And we have other things like properties and histogram up here that might become useful for us. And we also have like a secondary toolbar that we can add some tools here. Um, some of these things I've installed to my Photoshop. Don't worry too much about these quite yet, but do worry about the layers and the properties. Um, the properties right here is very important. This is how you're gonna adjust most of your layers. Now, depending on what kind of layer you have, your properties are gonna adjust. Just like how this top menu adjusts when you change tools, properties will adjust when you change layers. 
Now, Photoshop is unlike Lightroom in the way that you edit via layers. So you keep stacking things on top of each other um, in order to create an edit. Whereas Lightroom, basically all the edits just go on to one photo and they are what they are. Photoshop, you can have many layers, which can be very beneficial for you. So the first thing that you guys want to do when you get your photo here in Photoshop is to unlock the background layer. Now I want to show you guys, uh, you can use the same exact tools as Lightroom here in Photoshop. So if at any point in time you're ever lost, select your layer here, go up to filter and click on camera raw filter. So when you first switch to Photoshop, uh, just know that you can do literally anything you can do in Lightroom for the most part here in the camera raw filter. It gives you all sorts of sliders and options. These are the same that you see in Lightroom. You can do anything here. So at any point in time during your edit, you can open up the camera raw filter. If you just aren't sure how to do something in Photoshop, open this up, get it done the way you would do it in Lightroom, but you're still in Photoshop. Once you're done, you hit OK and it loads back out onto your image here. So. Adobe Camera Raw filter, super, super helpful. You're going to use it a lot, most likely. I really like using it, use it all the time. Now, you may be wondering, well, if I can just use that, it's pretty much the same thing as Lightroom. Like, what's so special about Photoshop after all? So the reason why you wanna use Photoshop is because you have a lot more control with what's called layers and layer masking. Now, maybe you guys have played a little bit with the Lightroom masking tools, and the ones in Photoshop are far superior to the ones in Lightroom, but they're very similar in the way that they work. So I'm gonna just show you guys a basic example here. You've got a lot of layers that you are gonna to wanna to use here in the adjustment layers um, tab here, I guess you could call it. So when you click the adjustment layers, you're gonna have all of these different options appear. You have a ton of different filters here, all of which you may or may not use. I'll tell you guys right now, you will probably end up using curves and hue saturation and color balance the most. You might also touch brightness contrast um, or maybe even like a selective color, but don't worry too much about these quite yet. For an example here, I wanna pull up a curves. Now when I pull up a curves adjustment, you can see that it appears on top of my layer. Now, anything I do to this curve is going to affect the photo and anything that's below. So think of these layers like stacking pieces of paper and any adjustment layer is like transparent. So it allows you to see through it. Whereas any solid layer like this one with a photo on it does not allow you to see through it. So anything that was below layer zero would not show on my image. Now we've got a layer mask here and what a layer mask does is it is like cutting out a piece of that transparent paper. So let me just show you guys an example here. I'm just gonna create a simple S curve to create some contrast in my scene, just like that. I can toggle this eyeball to see how that works. Now, what this white box here is, is it is called a layer mask. What this allows you to do is adjust your photo, adjust only parts of your photo as opposed to the whole thing. So if I grab my brush tool here, uh, I'm gonna click on the brush tool. I'm going to make sure I have black. If not, I'm going to swap the colors with this little arrow here. And then I can go up to my brush settings. I'm gonna do a large size, a low hardness, and I'm going to paint on this photo. So I'm just gonna show you guys a little example. If I didn't like what this curves layer was doing to the bottom of my photo. Okay, now notice when I toggle this, the curves layer is just affecting this top half of the photo. Now the reason for that is simply, you can see it there, the reason for that is simply because of this uh, layer mask. Anything that's black on the layer mask hides the layer. Anything that's white allows it to show through. Anything that's between black and white, so say I painted with 50% and it painted on like 50% gray, it would show through partially. Now the reason that this is very important is because you can use this on literally any layer. Right now I'm just using a simple layer mask on a simple curves layer, but this could be used for a variety of different things and it can be used even on full photo layers just like this. So let me show you an example that might actually make sense for your photography. I'm gonna go ahead and open a hue saturation here and I'm going to adjust the green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of green to the photo. Now this hue saturation layer is a pretty cool little adjustment layer here. It allows you to change the hue saturation and lightness of your layer. And it's a little bit better than the one in Lightroom because when you change the hue, you can actually change the hue as far as you want any direction. Unlike in Lightroom, you're a little bit limited to just change the hue ever so slightly. You can also select the color that you want to adjust. So you can click on master here and select which color you want to adjust. For this example, I want to adjust the greens. 
Um, and I can go ahead and bring this up and you can see how this brings the greens up in my scene. And I might also bring up the yellows because I think some of the color here is a little bit yellow. And now I can toggle this adjustment. Now let's say the adjustment came on a little bit strong. I could of course go reduce the saturation up here. I can also reduce the opacity down here. So you can reduce the opacity of any layer in Photoshop just like that. Now let's say that I felt like the saturation was good in the background here, but it's a little strong in the foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush. I'm going to grab a black foreground color and I'm gonna go up here. I like the size at about 1800 and the hardness at about zero feels good for this photo. Now I wanna adjust the opacity of my brush. Now it's important to note, anything up here is adjusting the opacity of your tool, while the opacity down here is adjusting the opacity of your layer. So I wanna adjust the opacity of my tool to about 30%. And that's just going to make it so that when I click and paint, I'm painting on 30% at a time. So I'm clicking multiple times here to affect the photo um, in a more feathered way. So rather than coming in here at 100% and just wiping this all out in one swipe, I'm creating a layer mask where I'm doing small little paintings and just creating, I'll show you the layer mask here, I'm creating a more feathered adjustment. So remember, anything that's black conceals, anything that's white reveals. So this hue saturation layer is going to be showing through anywhere where it's white and not showing through where it's black. So let me toggle this. Now you can see the back leaves are being um, saturated more, whereas the front leaves are hardly being touched at all. So this is really the power of Photoshop is your ability to use layer masks. You can do a ton of different things. Like I said, I could throw a little curves layer on here. I could create some contrast just like that. And I could put a layer mask on if I didn't want it to be in a certain spot. So you can do a variety of different things here with layers. There's virtually unlimited things you can do. And of course, we are just scratching the surface here in Photoshop. Now these layer masks can be made with more precise selections. Um, I could do things like just select this tree and make that my layer mask. I could use something called luminosity masking to create a mask based on lightness values in the image. There's virtually unlimited possibilities with layer masks, and that's really what makes Photoshop powerful and why you should start using it. Now even though this video doesn't really give you quite a full understanding of all the power you can do in Photoshop, this is a great place to go to start in order to start your journey into Photoshop because you need to learn the basics before you can jump into more advanced techniques like color range masking, luminosity masking, things like that. Now at any point in time, you can keep creating more layers on top. You can go back to this layer here. You can do a camera raw adjustment. So start editing your photos in Photoshop to really get a feel for how the program works. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys in order to see the layout of the software, but it is a really, really powerful piece of software, probably the most powerful piece of photo editing software out there on the market today. All right, everybody, well, that covers it. Hopefully, this is enough information for you guys to load your photo into Photoshop and start playing around. The best way to learn is by practicing. Uh, if you guys are interested in hopping on the fast track and learn a little bit faster, down below, I'm going to link a couple tutorials I have on my website. I've got a beginner and a, an advanced Photoshop tutorial. It covers literally everything you need to know about Photoshop, especially if you're a landscape photographer. This is specialized for you. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.